All right, so welcome everyone to today's um, uh, online training that we're doing. And the um, big question is, you know, is it a hands and hips game or is it a arms and shoulders game or is it a combination of the both? Uh, what is the driving force behind um, effortless power? So Pete, welcome. Um, you see sunny Melbourne down there? Yeah, it's uh, beautiful back home and uh, Queensland was beautiful and uh, it is a little cooler down here, but uh, I, it's certainly nice to be back at home base where I've got my own backyard practice area. Uh, and uh, anyone that has a bit of a backyard, or, or uh, I'd recommend setting up a little area where you can practice your, your chipping and pitching. It would uh, help you full swing a lot. Yes, here we are. Yes, sir. Yeah, so even just setting up a hula hoop or an umbrella or something what you've got out there um, and practicing some of the things we're going to share with you today uh, will, will definitely help. All right, so I'll just reshare the screen here and um, let's get started again. Okay, so first thing is, you know, what, what, is, an, uh, what is an arms and shoulders swing? Um, basically an arms and shoulders swing the force is predominantly coming from, from more the upper body um, um, it's, it's strong emphasis on a left arm lever uh, that the, the torso the upper body is, is rotating um, and what we find generally with this swing is it puts a little bit more strain on the, on the back and joints um, Pete just share with us what, I, what is an arms and shoulders kind of swing and what's the belief behind it okay well uh, I know that it's, uh, it's, it's a way of, of building the golf swing from the, the, the takeaway all the way to the finish where the, the arms and the shoulders are basically the leading force in the swing. They, they start the backswing with a, either a, 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 a shoulder and arm movement or it's just uh, completely from the shoulders or again, it could be from the arms. So it's predominantly the, the muscles in the upper body are going to be controlling the swing from the start. So you, you start, you see some of the players out on the tour, they're, they're doing this movement away from the ball a few times before they take it away. Justin Thomas is one I see, and they, they're very conscious of this. Uh, and they do, a very, they do a great job playing golf. Uh, but basically, uh, a lot of people have a problem when they do that, that the arms, if I, I've got a special board here that actually highlights what actually happens to the body when you predominantly start away with the arms. I think I'll throw this in short, straight in the beginning here. So this is a, uh, a board, balance board, it's called. Uh, it, Promote staying in your center and uh, and rotating and making the golf swing turning in a barrel, which we really promote. Now, when I take it away with my arms and shoulders, first, the lower body doesn't, it, it actually, if I put the club in the ground and went away with the arms and shoulders, the actual lower body is wanting to go that way as opposed to the upper body, which is going here. So there's a lot of torque or uh, strain or wind up between the shoulders and the lower body and that uh, eventually in that sort of a swing the arms and shoulders win the race and the, and the hips do turn but in the process there's a lot of a lot of strain put on the on the, the spine and uh, it has a few other things so but the, the arm and shoulder swing just as in a nutshell it's taken away with the focus on either the left shoulder and left arm or the chest. So it's one of those sort of uh, key, key thoughts to make the golf swing start. And then in the downswing, uh, you're pulling from, the, from the, either the, the, the left arm or the shoulder. So um, it's basically dominated by <laughs> the arms and shoulders. Back to you. Um, yeah, so let's um, so if that's the arms and shoulders swing, let's let's have a look at the next um, part, which is what what is a hands and hip swing? Uh, the hands and hip swing generally the the hips are the engine, and the hands are the keys to the engine. 
the hand switch on the engine and then the engine um, allows the swinging club to do the work. Um, it's a bit better use of centrifugal force is what we find. Um, and it's easier on the body and the joints. So Pete, just share with us those points, um, exactly what you found. Right, well, in the process of uh, making the hands the source of motion and controlling the swing from the hands out, when your hands work in a pushing orientation. Now, just to work out what pushing is, when you move one hand against the other, that's a push. And when you move your hands a little bit away from you, that's a pushing action. A pulling action would be coming in or moving apart. So when I push the right hand against the left hand resistance, what we discover is that in the forward press movement, it unlocks the hips and makes the hip turn a little forward. Mm -hmm. And then conversely, when you push the left hand back against the resisting right hand, the right hip turns. So the hip moves and the shoulder then swing the club away. So it's predominantly uh, triggered by the hand pressure, one hand against the other, just moving slightly off center. Not a whole lot of movement, but just changing the wrist angle uh, will engage the pivot of the hips and in turn the shoulders and the club head swings away uh, if i look at it from this action the hips turn early transporting the shoulders the arms hands and club away and then the centrifugal force the momentum kicks in and the swinging club head uh, effortlessly hinges the wrists to wind up the shoulders in the backswing so that's what it looks like from that angle if we look at the hands and hips, when I forward press, there's a little movement of the left knee and left hip in the forward press. The shoulders don't go, that, when you use your hands effectively, the right elbow bends in a little, shoulders rock a little. And then from there, when you push back the left hand against the right, the right hip turns, the left shoulder moves, and that takes the arms, hands and club back in more or less a slinging motion. And that that action really, wind, the swinging club head now winds up the arms and shoulders to give you a really a safer coiled backswing. So that's, that's where we're going, hands and hips. But let's continue on with, you've got some more points there, Chris. Um, yeah, Pete, so, so the thing is to work out what's better for you to create some um, create more powerful shots. Um, arms and shoulders uh, is more from the upper body as discussed. Um, and the hands and hips is more from the middle lower body. Arms and shoulders uses more resistance and structure for power. And hands and hips uses more centrifugal swinging forces. Um, so just share with us, and perhaps you can demonstrate a few shots there, Pete, just to to uh, give us the idea there. We'll, we'll do, Chris. I just had oh. to grab some money. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, you got there's a you guys, there's a money test for this. So basically, if I swing on this direction with a, I'll put a, a, a coin about. About a hand span back of the ball, about eight inches behind the ball, about 20 centimeters. So I'll make a few swings with the arm and shoulder. I just have a practice swing first because I'm not used to this. So I'm going to take it away with my my arm and shoulder action. And we'll just hit some small shots here. Take me a couple to get used to that that way of taking it away. Because to me, it's definitely a different feeling. I want more. This is arm and shoulder action. I'm starting it back from the left arm, left shoulder is what I'm keying on here. And I got the coin, a hand span back, okay? So again, arms and shoulders. 
not a bad shot, but uh, definitely I felt upper body controlling that. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a swing where the hand pressure, one hand against the other, triggers the hip turn and the forward press and then the hip turn in the back swing. And it'll be, become a back sling. I put a coin, again, about a hand stand back. Now, before I do the hands and hips, I'll, I'll take do it from the arms and shoulders from this direction. Nice and relaxed. Arms and shoulders. Just scraping it, just gradually taking it. Now, this will be a hands and hips action. You'll just see how much lower the club head stays. And it's, I'm not trying to do that. It's the club head gets a wider arc if you if you trigger it as a golf swing from the hands and hips. And to me, a wider arc is definitely going to give me a a more powerful and more con, con, controlled swing. So that's a hands and hips, that one. Now I'll do an arm and shoulder. Let me hit a couple more with the, I'll go back to the hands and hips because you can, you'll can you quickly see that you get a much wider arc and a lot smoother start to the swing for me if you trigger it through the hands and the hips. Bingo. And it just, my arms, instead of being muscular and tight, now they're much, my hands are softer. My arms are like connecting rods rather than power sources. And uh, it definitely, it's, it's a smoother, smoother and it's, it's easier to control the pace of the backswing. And uh, therefore it's uh, much easier to, uh, on the body and coordination of the arms, the hands, arms and body in the swing. Another, just one more, hands and hips. And it's a trigger action, push, push. And the thing is, when I do it that way, the pivot's easy this way, and it pivots. The pivot is triggered. So if I trigger it, the backswing pivot this way. As soon as the wrists start to hinge, and I put pressure against that, the club head pushes pressure against my hands. That triggers the hips to go the other direction. So while the handle is pointing on this side of my hips, only ever so slightly, not a lot, just a fraction, the hips are going to pivot that way. And as soon as the handle starts to move to the front side of my hip turn, it triggers the hips to go the other way. So the hip turn, when you use the hands as the trigger, the pushing action with the hands, it triggers the hips. You'll get the hips to work without having to consciously use the hips, they, they respond. The faster you use your hands, it, it naturally triggers a faster hip turn. Now I'll hit one just a little further. This is my 64 degrees, so I can make a bit of a swing. So hands and hips. Going about 25 yards and pretty straight. So that's what, that's what we're, uh, we're leaning towards, the a hands and hips control swing. Now, there are some other things uh, you might like to bring up there, uh, Chris, that uh, one versus the other, the benefits of the hands versus hips versus the arms and shoulders. Yeah, so the um, so the benefits um, obviously on the, on the body, on the on the spine, on the joints, um, because you know if you're working on resistance, um, the the spine's going to you know can only twist a certain amount. If you're allowing the the swinging club to do the work. Um, yeah, it's it's good for the muscles, the joints, and and everything. Um, and it's amazing what what the what the what it does as far as the stretch the stretch goes in the backswing, isn't it? So when you really swing it away, or or more like sling it away, what that stretching does um, to the um, hands or to the arms and to the muscles in the back there. Definitely, and I, I, I there's a couple of uh, teaching aids that I really 
I love using one's the, the orange whip. The other one is the uh, is the power swing, the the uh, air resistance. But this one here really highlights how whether you like it or not, if your arms and shoulders, you're still going to have some sort of lag at the club head. But when you use your your hands to move your hips, the swinging club head really uh, does its job in the backswing when you when you've got hands and hips. The, the 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 club goes very easily. That swinging object swings and swings on a really good arc. So when I swing away with the hands and hips, it's very easy to stay on a consistent backswing path. The club doesn't want to go inside or outside if you train your hands just to move along parallel to your feet line for that first piece, the forward press and to the end of the takeaway, then the club starts away consistently on the same path. That was quite interesting. I, I was able to hit those golf balls there two, two feet back of the ball and this object still was staying low enough to hit those golf balls. But uh, if I go away with my arms and shoulders, the tendency is that to try to keep it on the path, if I just take away the arms and shoulders first and now turn the hips, a lot of tendency for the arms to come across your body and they either get stuck here or they then bounce off of that. And you'll see golf swings that go away arms and shoulders will have a tendency to cross the line at the top. Uh, now that requires more timing, but also it puts an unnecessary strain on the back because when it comes in this way, the left shoulder has a tendency to dip. Now that throws the right leg up and you've got a lot of other compensating moves to make. So if I take it away with the arms and shoulders and I turn away nicely there, I get so far, now the hip turn takes me in and that arm pulling across my chest tends to drop the shoulder. Then to compensate for that, we tend to try to keep ourselves up. So you, uh, you start making other moves to get the club on the right path. So now if I take it away with the arms and shoulders, trying to keep it on the right path, I definitely get a, a, a tendency to tilt or dip the left shoulder. And uh, that all, all those sort of things require timing, but also they, re, they, they put undue stress on the, on the, on the back and the, and, the, and the other joints, knees, hips, whereas I push it, the club travels on this inclined arc quite effortlessly, which sets up the chain action or reaction of the, the, the downswing path wanting to come from the inside. Take it away with the arms and shoulders. There's always a tendency that you have to re-group re, uh, the, the path of the downswing. So uh, here we go, another hands and hips shot. You'll see the path. Oh, stay in. Effortless power. <laughs> Luckily, it's on my side of the fence. Okay. Oh, good. All right, that's that's great, Pete. So, so when when you say the hands are the hands are the keys, the hips are the engine. Um, you know what what turns the engine on? Right. Well, it's. I'm going to use my balance plates here because they're now. If you, not everyone will have a set of these, but you, you could sit in your swivel chair and and uh, push your hands up against the desk. So if I had a desk there and I push one hand against the other, you can see when I resist with the left hand, the left hip turns. And when I resist with the right hand, the right hip turns. It's not a lot of movement of the arms. It's just a ch slight change of wrist angle. Causes the pivot of the hips to start the movement back and forward. So that happens from up in the wrist area of the right hand. That's called a forward press. When you push back against that slight resistance, the right hip and left shoulder take it away. And then it becomes, I turn this upside down. So that really triggers a swinging motion 
right from the very beginning. You don't have to find the swing. You got one from the start. So uh, it's you can feel the weight of the club head all the way from start. You feel that heavy weight at the end. So you've got club head awareness, which is a very important part of control. The source of control is knowing where this club head is. You're going to control the golf ball. You've got to know where you've got to be able to control this club head and club face. Pretty important. So hands and hips lead to that effortlessness. It's a non-steering swing, definitely. Educated hands. Yeah, no, nothing better than a, a non-steering, uh, freewheeling, as you term it, um, golf swing. I mean, when you're on the golf course, you should be freewheeling it anyway. Um, exactly. What, what, what do you call a reckless abandonment? Is that what you said? You got to have you, you got to have a, an, an attitude of confident indifference, and uh, and uh, a carefree swing. So you're confident, but you. Uh, that, you'll, that the swinging motion is going to do the work for you. So if I do this from here off these, oops, put my AirPod back in. Okay, have a little practice swing above the ball. So relax and release. Bingo. So. When your hands are working correctly, your body works in harmony. There's no, you don't have to think about too much. Certainly we have drills that will educate your body so that will turn inside the barrel and turn internally. So you won't be going outside and swaying. Weight transfers, not because you try to, but because the club head swings this side, there's weight more there. And when you swing it that way, the weight Weight transfers is a is a natural re response to the swinging club head. So a lot of good things happen when you promote and build your golf swing from a hands and hips uh, starting and uh, continuing basis. Okay. Anything else to add to that, Chris? Have we got any more pieces that we can share? Um, yeah, not particularly. I, I guess if if um, if you really want to learn this properly, you you do the breaking eighty program with us, which is um, the whole goal is to break eighty and beyond. And um, anyone can break eighty when they really know what they're doing. Um, what was the comment from Ben Hogan, Pete, about breaking eighty? Well, he made a lot of comments, but he said uh, basically. Or any golfers that, that apply the right basic fundamentals and, and practice. He also said you dig it out of the dirt. You, it, it, it's just sitting in an armchair and reading about it or watching something like this, in, it now requires a training program. So the beautiful thing with our, our program online, Breaking 80, uh, we have the videos, but then you have the Zoom sessions weekly where you can ask questions and we can check your drills out and your swing. And then you've got Facebook. But it, we, that commits you to practice, and that's that, that's the big deal. Uh, I think I've, I've I've said this before in other ones that uh, there's a gentleman from Texas who's looking trying to find his way to Carnegie Hall, and he passed a couple of gentlemen sitting on the sidewalk having a coffee, and he asked them, uh, you know, how, he said I've lost. He said, how do you how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And they said, uh, practice, and. <laughs> To get on a golf course and make a low score, that's the same thing. But you need the technique. And we really, uh, this Breaking 80 program, will share it step by step. Because golf is a journey. It's not a quick fix. And so while you've got this idea, go out and try it. But come back to us and we'll, we'll fill you in and, and help uh, fine tune it for you. Yeah, Paul just asked uh, a question just about which, which hands are more dominant in the swing. It's you know, we don't really have a more dominant hand. Uh, it's it's basically educating both hands how to function and push together so that your body's in harmony and in balance. Is that right, Pete? Correct. It's Golf's a two-handed game unless you unfortunately only have one arm. And then there are people that are definitely, uh, when he was alive, Jack Newton got his golf game down to a low handicap with just one arm swinging. And uh, 
but golf, so if, if you've got two hands, you need both hands properly educated. And while one hand does a certain way of releasing through the ball or starting, the other hand doesn't do the same thing. They, they have they they work they have to be trained. Uh, we have some drills that'll train your left and your right hand. So a lot of right-handed golfers are right-hand dominant, and they they uh, there's an excuse that that's what causes them to to flip over. Well, that's not the case. It's just a case of uh, undereducated right or or wrongly educated right hand, or more probably more aptly not educated. <laughs> okay, so both hands. Golf's a two-handed game, so it's it's worth knowing and training in how one hand works and how the other hand works and put them together. Okay. Excellent, Pete. Well, I want to thank you for um, your great time for your time today and your great insights. It's always very insightful. I'm sure everyone uh, appreciated. And um, for those that missed it, we'll send out a replay. Um, Otherwise, um, we hope to see you in the Breaking 80 uh, program and uh, on a Tuesday live session. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. And thank you. And for those that would like a little bit, uh, an in intro, there's the Consistent Golfer uh, group on Facebook as well. That's a, that's a, free, a free group that you can get in there and get quite a bit of our information. And... Just to finish off, there's just a question with a 90 degree shoulder turn. It's not necessary to get a 90 degree shoulder turn. Um, I know there's a lot of hype. You should get a 90 degree, but if you study a lot of the tour players, they vary a lot, don't they? Depending on their flexibility, Pete. Yeah. Plus, the shoulder turn is a little bit of a uh, and a misunderstood. See, my shoulder blade moves independent of my spine. So my right, my left shoulder goes in say 40 degrees. My right shoulder can go back 40 degrees. So without moving my spine, I've already made what appears to be a 40 degree shoulder turn. And I haven't, I haven't moved my spine at all. Now, if I add my spine turn or my hip turn to that, there's another 40. So when you do it with a hands and hips orientation, your shoulders work properly. That they 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 get together and they don't overstrain the spine. When you take it away with the arms and shoulders, the tendency is you lock up the shoulder muscles, and then you have to make a a bigger effort to make a shoulder turn. So when I swing this club back, and I got the orange whip to help me, hands and hips. Now I didn't try to turn my shoulders. The, the, the hands and the hips and then the swinging club head. Now you can see there, I've got a full, full shoulder turn, but I'm not trying to turn the shoulders. That's another uh, important thing with when you, when you learn to do it with educated hands and, and, and push and, and connect your hand to your hip rotation. Uh, good golf is easy, not stressful on the body. All right. Well, thanks everyone once again. Uh, any further questions? Yeah, you can. We, we hope to see you on a, on a Tuesday with the Breaking Eighty program. Um, thanks, Pete, and um, good night, good morning, um, good afternoon, no matter where you are in the world. And thanks for joining us. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks everybody for your interest.